Now that you've connected your BATLAB 1 to your computer and you've launched the BATLAB 1 software, you're ready to start capturing uh, the estimated battery life for your particular project or product. Um, it's really a four-step process. Uh, step one is essentially entering battery information, and I'll take you through the details on that here in just a second. Step two is capturing the active event current. Um, so the actual current that your device is consuming during its active phase, reading sensors or uh, sending data over Wi-Fi or receiving data. Um, the active event is typically a much shorter event than the step, third step, which is capturing the sleep current of the device. Um, the sleep current of the device uh, has a duration just as does the active event. And we'll talk a little bit about how you enter that data in here in a minute. And then step four is once you've captured both the active event, the captures uh, and captured the sleep event current, and you've entered in your battery information, all of the results will be displayed here. And you'll see the estimated battery life uh, of your device in hours and days. And then we'll talk a little bit about how you can optimize that. How can you work with that data and do some what if analysis? So I'm going to start. Um, uh, by first entering some battery information uh, about my particular project. And the project that I have connected right now to the BATLAB 1 is a garage door sensor that I built uh, quite a while back um, that uh, uses an ESP8266 for sending data over Wi-Fi. It captures temperature. It tells me whether the garage door is open or closed. Um, you know, your basic garage door sensor. Um, for this particular project, I actually uh, am using a lithium ion battery. So I'll select a lithium ion battery type and a couple of things will happen there. First, you'll see that um, the data for this battery will default to some values, all of which you can override. Uh, in this case, because I selected the lithium ion battery, um, uh, it entered in a value of 2600 milliamp hours uh, for uh, the sort of rated value for the uh, for typical lithium ion battery. It defaulted to 3.2 volts for the device cutoff voltage. That's fully overridable, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and I'll show you how you change that. Um, you'll notice that this 3.2 volts is represented down in the lower right of the screen as well. This, this chart shows the state of charge profile for the lithium ion battery. Uh, for um, uh, basically 20 degrees C, and we'll be adding profiles over time um, so that you can improve upon some of the profiles that are uh, there today, but this will get you started on estimating your battery life. You'll see the red dot here actually represents the cutoff voltage, about 3.2 volts, and you'll see it's using most of the capacity of the battery. But let's say in my case, um, we'll use uh, 3.5, five volts as my cutoff voltage because my device is not working all. I haven't designed out all of the kinks in it and uh, right now I'm getting this 3.55 volt cutoff voltage. If I en hit enter, you'll see that the red dot will move uh, on the chart. And now you can see actually that there's a quite a bit more um, capacity that I could be capturing uh, from my lithium ion battery. Um, it defaults to 4.2 volts based again based on the fact that I've selected a lithium ion. Um, you can uh, use the uh, uh, sort of the steady state 3.7 volts or even 3.6 uh, volts. I'll leave it at 4.2. Um, the uh, BATLAB now presents you with a choice for how you want to turn on the power supply unit. Um, you can either just turn it on by clicking this button or this radio button or you can trigger the power supply unit um, from when you, uh, for when you click the capture active event current button. And so I've checked that box. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. You'll notice that the power supply unit actually is not on right now. This is not green, it's a black uh, text color. Um, when I click the capture active button, this will change to green. It will turn on the uh, power supply unit and it will power my device. At this point, um, in the active event current stage, we want to capture the, uh, the average current over the period of time, again, when I'm sending data, capturing sensor data, et cetera, et cetera. And in my case, I happen to know that it takes about 14.8 seconds um, for my uh, active event duration. 
Um, you can either enter that data in directly if you know it, or you can click on the external trigger button. And if you connect uh, the output pin of, say, an 8266 to trigger uh, the device uh, on, uh, it uses a 3 to 5 volt uh, rising edge to trigger the event and a 3 to 5 volt um, falling edge to turn off the data capture. So um, you can use that external trig. Uh, you'll see there's a BNC cable on the back of the BATLAB1 hardware that enables you to capture that data. I'm going to leave it at 4.8 seconds for now, and I'll go ahead and click the capture button. A couple things will happen. You'll see that it takes you through a progress bar um, as it's capturing data, and the green button turned on, so I know the power is now on my device. And when it's done, it'll do a couple things. First, it'll display the average current uh, for the active event here in green. It will also display the, um, the profile of that particular um, uh, active event. And you'll see down below here under statistics, you'll see the same 74.2 average event current, but you'll also see um, the amazing power consumption of the ESP8266. Uh, the maximum event current captured was about 493 milliamps. And the minimum was about 0 0.15, uh, basically right when we turned the device on. And some of that may have been some inrush current. Um, uh, but typically, when I've seen values in that 400 milliamp range, you'll see them here on the chart um, for the ESP8266 to send data over Wi-Fi. So we've now captured our active event current. Um, it's now time to capture the, um, the sleep event current. And sleep event has a duration just as uh, an active event. Um, but we typically program the sleep event current into our Internet of Things devices. And in my case, for my garage door opener, I have it sending data every hour. So I'll type in 3600 seconds, which is the uh, DUT sleep duration. You can now uh, select the uh, expected current range for the sleep current for your device. If you don't know what the expected range is, um, leave the uh, radio button selected to the 800 micro, microamp to 500 milliamp range, just to avoid damaging the sense resistor on the bat lab. Um, in my case, I know that I'm in the microamp range, so I'm going to select this 10 microamp to 800 microamp um, range and um, go ahead and capture my sleep current. Um, and it'll go through the same progress bar and show you as, you as it captures, it's just averaging sleep current over a period of time. And that is um, optional. You can change the amount of time that it takes to capture that data. And in my case, uh, for this particular garage door sensor that I've built, um, it's about 111 microamps of uh, current consumption uh, for sleep. Uh, currents. And um, really, at this point, um, we've captured everything uh, we need for the algorithm, for the BATLAB algorithm to calculate the estimated uh, battery life in hours and in days. And you'll notice down below um, that the estimated battery life for this captured profile is about 207 days. Um, this optimized column here to the right of the captured column lets you play around with those values. So Let's say I could get to a more optimal 3.2 uh, volt device cutoff um, uh, range or uh, cutoff voltage. Um, I'll go ahead and click on Optimize. And what you'll see down below now is that I've gone from 270 days to about uh, 256 days of estimated battery life. Um, so a pretty significant increase based on just adjusting my device cutoff voltage. I can change things like maybe if I could lower my, uh, my sleep current by a bit, see what that impact has, it gives me another 10 days or so. Um, maybe I can reduce my active current down to 13 uh, seconds instead of 14 seconds. That gives me quite a bit more, uh, another 30 or so or 20, 30 or so. Uh, days on my device. And again, you can play this what-if analysis um, and then save your results um, for uh, analyzing for other profiles as you capture them. So that's pretty much the overview of how to capture um, your estimated battery voltage uh, for your particular product or project using the BATLAB1. Uh, appreciate you spending time 
uh, watching the video. And if you have any questions, please uh, head on over to my website. You can click on the Bluebird Labs logo down on the left-hand corner, and it'll take you straight to my website, which is www.bluebird-labs.com. Thanks again.